Third base has changed. Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Thursday, February 8th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And what a difference a year makes, Scotty. How do you feel about third base? What is your strategy? I feel great about third base. And yeah, what a difference a year makes indeed. Because at this time a year ago, third base was the position you had to fill early or, or not at all. And I was so desperate to fill it early in fact that i was dragging nolan arenado into round two which seems crazy now in retrospect it's a complete turnaround now it, it's in my mind the deepest infield position which is saying something because all of the infield positions are pretty deep it's the one where i am most likely to wait until later in the draft to fill that spot I'm not saying you can't draft Austin Riley, Rafael Devers in round two, but I'm saying it should be pretty late in round two if you do, because others who go in the middle like Francisco Lindor, Bryce Harper, uh, I, I think they have more overall value, and, and that, that goes double in a points league, which Riley, Austin Riley's and um, Rafael Devers' skill set aren't best suited for. All right, let's talk sleeper, Scott. We both have two Cincinnati Reds on the list. Who's yours? Mine is Noel V. Marte, who has been well-known in prospect circles from the time he was 17 years old and just kind of did yeoman's work in the minors, decent numbers at every level, got to the majors. I wasn't really, I wasn't really that excited for him, but what he did once he reached the majors completely changed my view because average exit velocity for no LV Marte in 35 games, 91.3 miles per hour, max exit velocity, 150, 115.6 miles per hour. He clobbered the ball and he put his 91st percentile sprint speed to good use too, with six steals in those 35 games. So we're talking a 25, 30 steal pace guy clearly is willing to run. Uh, there were launch angle issues, but those straightened out during his his time in the majors and he eventually ended up with three home runs and uh i think given where he plays his home games there's legit 25 25 potential here if he can get in the lineup enough i know the reds are crowded with infielders but i think noel v Marte will be one of the ones who sits the least of that group the adp for noel v Marte is 191.6 let's stick with those reds you brought up some great points scott how great the ballpark is the lineup is improving Jamer Candelario should be hitting in the middle of that lineup. He signed a three-year, $45 million deal with the Reds this offseason. He's coming off a career year. He just finished as a top 150 player, yet his ADP is outside of the top 200. So he has first base and third base eligibility. You're now getting him at an ADP of 232.6. Love the value here on Jamer Candelario. Let's move over to breakout, Scott. Who you got? Breakouts. I have, got to refresh my memory, Cabrian Hayes. Cabrian Hayes, finally, I am predicting he will have his long-awaited breakout. Liked him when he first came up because he hit the ball hard. He's always had the exit velocities of a power hitter, but his swing wasn't optimized for power. Too much the opposite way, too much on the ground. That changed over the final two months last year. Cabrian Hayes's Fly ball rate and pull rate spiked to never before seen levels from him. And over that two month period, he hit 10 of his career high 15 home runs. Just project that out 10 home runs over two months translates to 30 home runs over six months. Not saying he'll hit 30 home runs last year, but there, there does seem to be 20 to 25 homer potential if he can sustain this approach. And there were some mechanical changes that, that coincided with it. He added a toe tap to his swing. Um, and said he felt really good about it. So I, I think a 25 homer, 15 steal season is within the realm of possibility for Cabrian Hayes, and maybe with a 275, 280 batting average. The AD cost hasn't really gone up. Yeah, that ADP for Cabrian Hayes, 189.9. The breakout for me is going to be Jake Berger. Finally got unleashed last year, hit 250 with 34 homers in 828 OPS, some of the best raw power in the game. And then he tr got traded to Miami, and he made some changes. He lowered the strikeout rate to just 22%. He hit 303 with an 860 OPS once he got traded over to Miami. If he could somehow blend these two approaches together, hitting the ball as hard as he does while striking out less, we could see a massive season. 275, 280 batting average, 
30, 35 home runs from Jake Berger. He's going to hit in the middle of that lineup. A former first-round pick people don't remember way back in 2017. Lots of upside here for Jake Berger. Scott, give me a bust, a name you are avoiding. Isak Paredes of the Rays, who's also eligible at first base. And he's kind of profile-wise, he's kind of the opposite of Kid Brian Hayes in that he, he his quality is, is about as... His contact, his quality of contact is about as low as it gets. Weak, weak contact from Isak Paredes, and yet he delivered more than 30 homers last year because his launch angle was so optimized for power. Extreme fly ball and pull rates. That seems like a gimmick. That seems like the sort of thing where if there's any slippage at all, the whole thing unravels, and Isak Paredes has nothing to fall back on. And particularly on the Rays, if, if he gets off to a slow start, if there's signs of it unraveling, he may have a hard time finding his way back into regular bats, given all the alternatives there. Bust for me is going to be Royce Lewis, who has an ADP of 66.8. I love the talent. Cannot question that one bit. It's just a matter of health. Can he stay on the field? You're paying a top 70 price tag for a player who hasn't done it over the course of a full season yet. So, again, love the talent, but I do think there's a little bit of a lower floor here for Royce Lewis. Favorite names to draft at the position? It's going to be Manny Machado for Scott. Jake Berger for me. If you want to find out why, listen to our full-length podcast, Fantasy Baseball, today over on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 